we are going to review the echo eligibility criteria assessments including who can perform the scan when should the scan be performed and the technical aspects of echo examination utilized for baby oscar trial the first scan should establish the structural normality of the heart and if any structural heart disease is suspected clinically or echocardiographically then further opinion should be sought as per the local practices or from the pediatric cardiologist having established the structural normality of heart the scan to assess the child for eligibility for baby oscar trial include obtaining a high left parasternal that is a ductal cut view and assess the ductal patency and ductal flow characteristics the subsequent slides we are going to talk about how do we do this the echocardiographic criteria for inclusion in baby oscar trial are the duct diameter of 1.5 mm or more this is determined by gain optimized color doppler and having a flow pattern that is either pulsatile left to right flow where the flow velocity is a maximum velocity to minimum velocity ratio of more than 2 or it is a growing flow pattern where the right to left flow is less than 30% the clinician performing the scan should establish that there are no clinical concerns of pulmonary hypertension the pda ductal cut view requires appropriate probe with a pointer facing towards 12 o'clock in the high left parasternal view placed on the baby's chest and the echocardiographic image is obtained the image here it shows the right ventricle outflow tract the pulmonary valves leading into pulmonary artery which is dividing into the two pulmonary arteries the left and the right and a part of the descending aorta is also seen in the center of the image is the cross section of the aortic wall here the 2d image and a color flow doppler image are shown side by side showing the pulmonary end of the ductus arteriosus and a part of the descending aorta showing the entire length of pda it can be compared with the left pulmonary artery which is on its right this slide shows a 2d image showing the patent ductus arteriosus and the left pulmonary artery side by side the arrow is pointing towards the pulmonary end of ductus where the duct should normally be measured unless there is a constriction away from the pulmonary end of the ductus it is very important to optimize gain before establishing and measuring the pda dimension this includes by increasing the scale so that you can see the duct in its flow on the color flow doppler and increasing the color gain until there is bleeding or spilling of the speckles in the tissue around the ductus after that you reduce the gain so that the duct is seen as a nice clean flow pattern which is utilized for duct dimension here you see the red color flow in the ductus i would like to draw your attention on this side which shows a ductus on the color flow and it looks quite narrow as compared to the previous slide having said that the same baby has been scanned 30 seconds apart but on this slide the color gain settings are not appropriate and this can lead to an uh, underestimation of the pda as the pda gain settings on the color flow doppler were not set appropriately 
expense for assessment of the ductal dimension, obtain a high left parasternal or ductal cut view, optimize your color flow gain as already explained before and measure color flow dimension at the narrowest point by frame to frame analysis of the video loop selecting frames with the clearest discrete appearance of the ductus. You can use a 2D imaging to guide the point at which the color dimension could be measured and I would suggest for the trial entry you do at least three measurements and take an average of the three utilized for entry into the case report form and for ascertaining the entry and meeting the inclusion criteria for baby Oscar trial. This slide shows the pulsatile flow pattern which shows a high systolic and low diastolic value or velocity and if you take the ratio of the peak to the minimum velocity this ratio should be more than 2. If this ratio is less than 2 then the duct is not called pulsatile. On a flow assessment if you find a blue color duct as you see on the left image and on the flow if you see the entire flow going below the baseline this is a right to left shunting in the PDA. The right to left shunt of more than 30 percent of a cycle time should be considered abnormal and this could be because of uh, underlying duct dependent congenital heart disease or pulmonary hypertension. The action should be taken and the clinical management guided as per the condition of the baby and the local practices. Here the five flow patterns are shown. The pattern A is called the right to left flow which is always abnormal as you see the majority of the flow is below the baseline and is right to left. The pattern B is bi-directional flow which is the left to right flow above the line and the right to left flow below the line. The right to left flow here is more than 30% of the cycle time and hence it is called bi-directional flow. The C it is showing the growing pattern where majority of the flow is left to right which is above the baseline and less than 30% of the cycle time there is a flow which is right to left below the baseline. Pattern D is a pulsatile flow which is a high systolic and low diastolic flow with a pulsatility index of uh, more than 2 i.e. the maximum velocity to the minimum velocity ratio of more than 2. If you find the maximum to minimum velocity ratio of less than 2 or a sawtooth pattern as shown in the E picture this is called the closing pattern. Here the calculation of the pulsatility ratio is shown on the upper uh, picture there is a peak velocity of 3.13 meter per second but the minimum velocity is 2.03 meter per second that is the peak systolic to the end diastolic velocity ratio is only 1.54 this is called a closing PDA however in the picture below the pulsatility ratio is 5.43 that is the peak velocity of 2.55 and the end diastolic velocity of 0.47. Hence a pulsatility ratio of more than 2 is considered to represent a pulsatile flow pattern. As a part of the baby Oscar trial we do not expect post intervention echoes to be performed after completing the baby Oscar trial medication. However it is requested that at 3 weeks or if the baby is transferred to another step down unit before three weeks then echo should be performed before transfer. The echo is also required to be performed if the clinician considers to give an open treatment for a clinically significant PDA. Please refer to the protocol for the criteria when the open treatment can be considered based on the clinical findings and we are going to discuss further the echocardiography findings. So for a three week or a later scan you would also assess the PDA size and the flow and the presence of a hyperdynamic circulation or assessment for the presence of ductal steel. 
the echocardiographic criteria for an open treatment include a minimum duct dimension of 2 mm or more, an unrestrictive pulsatile left to right flow in the PDA, and presence of a hyperdynamic circulation or ductal steel mm -hmm. as per the echo criteria. To assess the hyperdynamic circulation, you require the measurement of the left atrial to aortic root ratio using an M mode. Please ensure that the cursor is at right angles to the aorta and the posterior wall of the left atrium. You are required to take a mean of at least three measurements and a LAAO ratio of two or more is considered as significant for the purposes of the baby Oscar trial as it signifies left atrial dilatation secondary to volume overloading of the left heart. This slide shows you how to measure the left atrial to aortic root ratio. On the left, the picture shows the 2D image of the parasternal long axis view showing the left atrium, closed mitral wall, left ventricular cavity and the open aortic wall. You need to drop the M mode cursor through the base or the root of the aortic wall passing across the left atrial chamber. On the right image, you see the M mode picture which is showing the um, aortic root as well as the left atrium. Now how to measure is provided in the picture below where the left atrial diameter is measured from the advancing edge as is shown there for LA to the advancing edge of the post left ventricular posterior wall. For the aortic root diameter you take when the aortic wall is closed and here what you are seeing is the picture showing AO, showing the ASE and the dimension from the receding side to the advancing side of the aortic root. This LAAO ratio is providing the dimensions and you take the ratio which provides the LAO ratio value. To assess the ductal steel, obtain the view of the descending aorta using a high parasternal or arch view. You can also do it using the imaging of the celiac or superior mesenteric artery as they are permissible alternatives. Now when you are uh, doing the post ductal aortic flow, you sample the pulse wave Doppler gate after the origin of the duct from the aorta that is in the descending part of it and get the pulse wave flow. The angle correction is necessary and it should be less than 15 degrees otherwise you will get erroneous values. You record the presence of a retrograde post ductal aortic flow that is going to be shown in the subsequent slide. Here in the upper picture you see a blue color flow in the descending aorta and the pulse gate is placed in the descending aorta where you get a continuous flow shown on its right with no diastolic tail and there is no flow above the line. This is all anti-grade flow. The same is shown in the picture below where the descending aortic flow is shown. However, the low right picture it shows there is a descending aortic flow below the line and intermittently between the two forward flows there is a small amount of flow above the line which is called the retrograde or reversed aortic diastolic flow. This slide shows the measurement of the celiac flow which is a surrogate of uh, assessing any retrograde flow in the distal part of the aorta or the vessel supplied by the descending aorta. In the above picture, there is a color flow on the Doppler in the celiac axis with a pulse gate placed in the celiac artery. The upper picture shows a forward flow which is all above the line. But the lower picture, it shows in between the flow which is above the line, there is a small amount of flow seen between the cycles below the line. This is called the retrograde flow. 
This sample was obtained from the superior mesenteric artery. This question is routinely asked as who can perform the assessments. For the baby Oscar trial, neonatologist or cardiologist, which includes consultants and trainees who have expertise in performing the neonatal echocardiography and are able to visualize and assess the ductus arteriosus can and are allowed to do the assessments using conventional views. The named echocardiographers for each center should appear in the delegation log and it is the responsibility of the principal investigator of each site to assess the echocardiographer to put on the delegation log who can perform the echo independently or vetted by the principal investigator or a cardiologist or another member of the team who is proficient in performing echocardiography. So in summary, the assessment of ductal potency and flow characteristics are required before entering the child into baby Oscar trial. We have talked about the assessment of ductal dimension and how to assess the flow including that pulsatile or growing pattern flow are eligible for inclusion at the time of randomization. The assessment of a hyperdynamic circulation which includes the measurement of the left atrial to aortic root ratio which should be more than 2. The assessment of ductal steel which can be performed in the descending aorta or celiac mesenteric axis for establishing a reversal of the flow between the cycles as has been shown before will complete the echo assessment required either at the time of randomization which includes assessment of flow and the ductal patency and later on where the flow patency and assessment for the hyperdynamic circulation and or ductal steel is required.